Let's use Euler's formula to investigate de Moivre's theorem. First, I'm going to write down Euler's formula, and then we're going to do some modifications to it. So the left-hand side is going to be e to the i theta, and the right-hand side is going to be cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. We've been working with this formula a lot in the past few videos. So make sure you check out those previous videos where we actually go into a lot of detail on how you can use Euler's formula. So Euler's formula is the link between complex exponentials and trigonometric functions. What I'm going to do to Euler's formula is I'm actually going to raise both sides to the power of n. So n is just going to be some exponent. We're going to take this side, raise it to the power of n, and we're also going to do that to this side. So I'm going to raise this to the power of n. And what I want to do is I want to show you de Moivre's theorem. And that actually gives us a very interesting relationship between this and another arrangement of trigonometric functions. So let's use exponential laws to change this left-hand side. We can actually use exponential laws to bring this n inside and put it into the exponent. So that's what I'm going to do underneath. So we're going to have e to the i times n theta. And I'm going to specifically group these guys together, n times theta, because now we have a new angle. So this is actually equal to the top by exponential laws. So we have a new angle. Raising this to the power of n is the same as multiplying the angle by n. So we have n copies of the angle. So what can we do with this? Well, we can actually use Euler's formula to write this in an alternative way. So let's do that. We can write this as cosine of n theta, and we also need a plus i sine n theta. And this is actually de Moivre's theorem. De Moivre's theorem says that this is equivalent to this. So taking this combination and raising it to the power of n is the same as taking this cosine and this sine and inputting the angle multiplied by n. So multiplication inside the argument over here is actually the same as raising this whole expression to the power of n. This is actually very useful. And in this form, we just, we're just dealing with complex numbers that live on the unit circle. But this can actually be extended beyond the unit circle. It can actually encompass any possible complex number. All you have to do is include the magnitude of that number or the radial distance away from the origin. If you include that in as a factor, you will actually get de Moivre's theorem, and that de Moivre's theorem actually works for any complex number. But this is just for complex numbers that live on the unit circle. And we've actually seen uh, one special case of de Moivre's theorem in an earlier video, when we were talking about squaring this, when we had a square over here, and we actually set n equals to 2. For the case where n equals to 2, we actually have this, or write down the expression. We have that squaring this is equivalent to putting a 2 over here. And when we actually, if we square this expression over here, that's going to be equivalent to cosine of theta plus i sine of theta squared. And that's equal to just putting a 2 in front of the thetas. So we're going to have cosine of 2 theta plus i sine of 2 theta. So you can see this is just a special case of de Moivre's theorem, and we've used this in a previous video. So squaring is the same as multiplying by 2 inside over here. So doubling the angle has the same effect as squaring this complex number. So this is the real component, and this is the imaginary component. So what we've done in this video is investigated de Moivre's theorem using Euler's formula. So these are closely linked mathematical properties. The Moivre's theorem and Euler's formula work together very well. And then you, you can actually see the historical development of complex numbers if you look into the history of de Moivre's theorem. We're going to be using interesting properties like these a lot in quantum mechanics. So it's very important to get used to manipulating complex exponentials and trigonometric functions. We're going to keep doing that in the rest of this playlist. If you want to see other videos in the quantum mechanics playlist, you can find them if you click over here.